May the love and peace of the Lord be with us all, as we listen to today's Gospel and Reflection. Let us now listen to the Word of God. November 15, 2023, Wednesday of the 32nd week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And it happened that, while he was traveling to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he was entering a certain town, ten leprous men met him, and they stood at a distance. And they lifted up their voice, saying, Jesus, teacher, take pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And it happened that, as they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was cleansed, returned, magnifying God with a loud voice. And he fell face down before his feet, giving thanks. And this one was a Samaritan. And in response, Jesus said, Were not ten made clean? And so where are the nine? Was no one found who would return and give glory to God, except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise up, go forth. For your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection Am I truly grateful for the blessings in my life, acknowledging them as gifts from God, and expressing my gratitude with a sincere heart? Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go, your faith has saved you. Luke 17 verses 17 to 19 This reply from our Lord came, in response to the one leper who returned to Jesus to thank him. Ten lepers had come to Jesus, stood at a distance, cried out, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And with that, Jesus healed them all. But the heart of this healing is not as much the healing itself as it is the gratitude expressed by only one of the ten. This gospel relates to us that this one leper did five things to profoundly express his gratitude. He returned, glorified God, did so in a loud voice, fell at the feet of Jesus, and thanked him. What a wonderful witness for us all! By analogy, children often take the loving care of their parents for granted. That's why many good parents regularly remind their children to say, thank you. In our relationship with God, we can also easily take God's saving actions for granted. We can easily see all the grace we receive as something we deserve, rather than as an infinitely merciful gift. When that happens, we become more like the other nine, who failed to properly express their gratitude to Jesus. First of all, it must be noted that expressing gratitude to God is not done because God needs these accolades. He does not depend upon our gratitude to affirm his self-worth. This is obvious. God is God, and he does not need our praise in any way. However, giving profound praise and glory to God is essential. It is essential because we need this virtue of gratitude, so as to daily be reminded, that all we receive from God is an unmerited gift. We cannot earn his love and grace. We do not deserve it. But he chooses to bestow it anyway out of mercy. And the only appropriate response to mercy is gratitude. Profound gratitude. Gratitude is essential because it is the truth. We should always return to our Lord after he has graced us. We should glorify him with much fervor, crying out to him with passion. We should, literally and interiorly, fall on our face before him, at his feet, and thank him, over and over and over again. 
Doing so will always help us to remember the truth, that everything we have, and everything we are, is a gift from God. An unmerited and undeserved gift of grace. Reflect today, upon the depth of gratitude in your own heart. Do you often act more like a spoiled and selfish child, or do you regularly perceive the graciousness of God? If you lack in any way this fullness of gratitude, then ponder this one leper. His gratitude, expressed with the fullness of passion, is the most important part of this story. In the end, he was graced far more than the other nine, because his healing produced faith, and it was that faith that saved not only his body, but his soul. Seek to save your soul by imitating the faith of this one holy and healed leper. Let us pray. My gracious Lord, you bestow your mercy upon me in superabundance. Without you Jesus, I have nothing, but with you, I receive everything. May I always know and understand my need for your grace. And as I am gifted with it, may I respond with the deepest gratitude, thus, saving my soul through faith. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Gospel and Reflection. We hope that our small effort gave you a bit of inspiration, as you journey your day with God. Please give us a like so this will reach to as many people as possible. Again, thank you and may God bless us all.